Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is a special episode number 20. Bainte. Bainte. <laughs> oh, he did. He brought back the uh, think about Spanish. Yeah, yeah, that was good. So we got Aaron back on the show, for better or worse. And uh, <laughs> we've got uh, some nice things to talk about this week. We've got a little bit of CUDA news, Barry CUDA, right? Mm -hmm. uh, playing pretty well. We've got the Week in Review, which we played in uh, Nashville. We played in Carolina. And we played recently in Anaheim. Yep. We'll do some player spotlights on some guys. And we also are going to do a giveaway for... 1,000 subscribers, which you are very close to. Yeah. And we'll get to that at the end of the show. Very good. Okay, you ready to start the show? Ready. Well, that's too bad because we were all getting used to Marshall, so. Ugh. Okay, so. Um, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. <laughs> Nice. Um, <laughs> so, uh, first thing on the set, we've got a couple of new bobbles here. I think mm -hmm. uh, our uh, key grip uh, Joe might have brought some in. <laughs> so we've got the uh, the Burnsy in the green suit there, and the hat comes off. Bun. That's ph phenomenal. I love it. And then we got the uh, the Joe Pavelski going on here with the nice big uh, slapper. I guess you were trying to put the stick in uh, the wrong way there. <laughs> I first got it. I'm you, like trying to go in the backwards. You thought on he the was bottom, and I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I could see why the stick, they didn't put the stick in there because you have to do it yourself and we're trying to bend it and then you're like, oh, it's the wrong way. <laughs> Idiots. He was trying to sweep something? Or? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, anyway, um, the guy who plays hockey wouldn't have made that mistake, just so you know. Uh, anyway, uh, CUDA news. Uh, that's the San Jose Barracuda are on a winning tear right now. Yep. They are absolutely tearing it up. So um, really fun to go out there and check them out and watch when you get the chance. Bring the little ones and everything, but they, it is good hockey. Uh, they are scoring left and right and center, and they are playing very, very well right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're a lot of fun to watch, and yeah. the games are always fun anyway. Yeah. And great for families. So yep. Uh, you've got... The Barracuda. Yeah, you've got, what's his name? Uh, Francis Perron, mm -hmm. not to be confused with uh, David Perron. David Perron, right. Perron, right. Same, whatever. Anyway, so um, yeah, Francis Perron, I think he had, what was like, 10 points, 5 Perron, goals, 5 assists. Perron was part of the trade, the mm -hmm. Carlson trade, so that was one of the guys along with Carlson that came back yeah. to us. So um, an update for play, for for fans who don't know who he is. Right, thanks for clarifying. So they, yeah, nine games played, the guy's got 10 points, five goals, five assists, <laughs> and is the first name Jason? I don't know, Halbugu Watts. <laughs> Hogwarts. Hogwarts, yes, call. Jason. <laughs> Was it Jason? I don't think it's Jason. Anyway, uh, Mr. Hogwarts, Hog, 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 <laughs> now you're going to do it all the time. <laughs> Hogwarts, Watts, I think is his name. Uh, he's also got uh, 10 points in nine games, pretty much identical. And they are just absolutely tearing it up right now. Mm -hmm. Again, really fun stuff to watch. Uh, go out and, and give them a look because uh, it, it's, it's awesome hockey right yeah. now. So, uh, The other thing that we wanted to bring up was there was an article that was comparing uh, Dylan Gambrell to uh, to Tierney mm -hmm. and the time spent in the AHL, if you wanted to kind of elaborate a little yeah, bit. Yeah, basically his trajectory of his uh, career. So Tierney first started with the Sharks. Uh, he spent a good amount of time seasoning with the, the Barracuda back then, or the Worcester Sharks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he was on the Worcester, but then they moved to San Jose. So he was on the San, or San Jose Sharks or the... I don't even remember what they called. No, they changed it to Barracuda when they came here. Yeah. I'm all over the place. The Worcester Sharks. So, the, the right. Sanzibar Worcester Barracuda. Sharks changed to San Jose Barracuda right. to not confuse people, which it just did. So, uh, <laughs> Well done. <laughs> uh, thank you. But Couture, um, uh, the good thing, and we've talked about this before about players doing this, where um, Gambrell, for instance, who's going to be a good player, um, would benefit more staying down on the Barracuda level, um, getting top line minutes, uh, so 18 to 20 minutes a game, top power play, maybe even penalty kill. I don't, I'm not sure, but um, it's better for him to do that than to be on the fourth line or the what line did you call it? The, the low utilization line. Right. <laughs> uh, it's better than, than getting eight minutes at the NHL level, maybe 10. Right. Um, so you're better, you get more ice time, you get more experience, you get right. more confidence. Uh, you really develop your game, you work on things that you need to work on, um, and you don't. You have a little bit less pressure, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, and then what the Sharks like to do is they like to reward those players, um, merit-based rewards, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the situation we're seeing with Chartier and kind of Gambrell, too, a little bit, right. um, if he makes the lineup in the coming yeah, weeks. Yeah, I think uh, one of the quotes in the article was, you know, it's, it's good for them to be the man mm -hmm. uh, down at that level. So um, <laughs> we have a couple of the man uh, on, on the Sharks roster right now. 
Pete DeBoer clearly watching the Fin Factor uh, as he wants to try and prove me wrong uh, by putting Burns and Carlson together on the power play, and it worked. Um, you know, I, again, I guess my point there wasn't so much uh, that it, they can't work together. It was that it makes both units much more deadly, having one or the other on those units, especially mm -hmm. with the forward depth that we have. Uh, but it just goes to show that you still can put them together and the chemistry can work. And uh, they, they combined for, in the Nashville game at least, they combined for the fifth goal, the game-winning goal. Um, Carlson putting it right over to Burnsy. And where did Burns shoot that from? Oh, yeah. The Ovechkin slot, <laughs> if you want to call it then. I they, think you brought that up before. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, a couple, well, it wasn't last episode because nope. I wasn't here. But <laughs> a couple weeks ago, uh, I mentioned that they should put him in that, in that area, and Carlson fed him with a beautiful pass across. Mm -hmm. Um, and I read I read an article about how uh, Carlson's still getting adjusted to the team, but the team's getting adjusted to Carlson. Mm -hmm. So Carlson um, is kind of like Joe Thornton in a way of playmaking ability, uh, where you have to have your stick down on the ice and expect it at any point, because Carlson finds seams that a lot of players don't, mm -hmm. um, similar to Jumbo, and they're not prepared for it. And we're starting to see that gel a little bit more, like that pass, right. beautiful pass to, to Burns, who just slammed it home. So. Um, I think uh, we're going to see some better production out yeah. of all of them as a team. Not not just Carlson, but but the rest of the team. We're going to see a lot of that. Yeah, so. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to agree with you on that one. And the nice thing was, I mean, credit where credit is due. It was a great pass, but it, it was a little bit off. And Burnsy going down on a knee, and mm -hmm. he still got all of it. Every you know every little bit of that shot, and it just he blasted it. It was just insane. What a great shot that was. So um, really awesome to see that the two of them can combine and, uh, and and get that goal. And the most important thing there is that it happened in the third period because we were talking about this yeah. before, where the Sharks, outside of the Philadelphia game, mm -hmm. the Sharks had been outscored 9 nothing in third periods. Yeah. Well, here they are down 4-2 to two going into the third, and what do they do? Do they turtle? Obviously not. <laughs> right? No, they come back and they score three. Uh, yeah. And it's all led by a, uh, a, a very special goal <laughs> from one of the top... Um, offensive talents on the blue line. <laughs> um, no, not not either of those guys, as Aaron pointed out on Twitter. No, it was Brendan Dillon <laughs> yeah. taking it from coast to coast. Yeah, such a short-handed. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Uh, yeah, he put it on the backhand. I think wasn't it? He just ripped it up. I don't think it was a backhander, was but I, I'm, I'll tell you, he he charged from from the back of our net. All the way through, straight through everybody mm -hmm. through the neutral zone, breaks in and he just pumped one past and and man, what a goal! Saros, I mean, he, I don't think he got even got a piece of it. He just no. fired it, and it uh, it went a little wide and and right in. It was yep. just a beautiful, beautiful goal, and it kickstarted the team. And that's mm -hmm. what they needed. They needed something to get them going. And and you have all these games where we're not playing very well in the third. It's not us turtling necessarily. It's just that we need that spark. Well, Brendan Dillon provided that spark in that game, and it, it led us to a comeback. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it was good. It was good to see the the team get energized and mm -hmm. uh, and especially Nashville's on a five game winning streak. They were at home. Nashville's at home, mm -hmm. and um, it's a very tough place to play. And the Sharks hadn't won there in I think since two thousand eleven in the regular season, not including playoffs. Right. But um, it had been a long time since the Sharks had won in that building in regulation. So yeah. uh, it was good to see them come from behind, down four to two in the third period, and like we just said, they had down. Or they were a negative nine yeah. in the third period. Um, they put up three goals in the third period. So not only did they not go to overtime and get the loser point, if you will, <laughs> uh, for either team. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a big jump in the standings. Um, the Sharks over the Western Conference yeah. rival of the Nashville Predators. Massive, yeah. And they carry that momentum into the next game against uh, Carolina. Mm -hmm. And the first period, they're all over the Hurricanes. They go up two nothing. And everything's looking great until the second period. Second period <laughs> kicks in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. So Peter Bohr after the game mentioned, uh, you know, the game is a full sixty-minute game, yeah. not a twenty-minute game. Um, and we've seen the Sharks do this over a number of years. This isn't anything new, yeah. I guess. And it's. I don't think it's also just to the Sharks. Like I don't think there's any team that plays a full yeah. sixty minutes for an entire eighty-two game season. Right. So part of this is DeBoer just sparking his team, trying to, to stoke the fire, and that's part of the thing of an NHL coach is you have all these players that are pretty evenly matched skill-wise, you know, not completely evenly, but the coach has to poke and prod guys and get the best out of their players on a nightly basis mm -hmm. on a very packed schedule. Um, so I, it's this is kind of Pete using the media and, and not in a negative way right. per se, but um, 
just trying to, to stoke the fire of, of getting his team going. Um, but we did see them. They did go to the shootout and lost in the shootout. Right. And one thing I don't like <laughs> is a shootout. Coming from a soccer background, I'm totally fine with ties. Like, whatever. <laughs> Even the NFL now is fine with ties. There's, there's so many ties in the NFL. Okay. So um, I hate the shootout. I hate that it's a skills competition. I like shootouts. I think they're exciting. Right. But the way that they do it, I think... I, this is a whole long conversation of what <laughs> needs to get changed. I think what they should do is change the point system. Yes. Then I'm fine with the shootout. So a regulation win would be three points. Yeah. An overtime win would be three points. Um, or no, that no I guess it would be two. Would be two overtime and a shootout win would be two yeah. points. And then a shootout loss or an overtime loss would still be a point. Mm -hmm. And then a loss would be nothing. I think that would eliminate... The problem and I think the, the, the reason you bring that up is because then you're not creating a point out of thin air, right? Mm -hmm. Three points are up for grabs at all times. If you win during regulation, you get all three. If you lose during regulation, you get none. Yep. Uh, otherwise, if it goes you know, to, to uh, extracurricular, if you will, right? It goes beyond the 60 minutes, then you're splitting those, two and, uh, those three points up into two and one. Mm -hmm. So you're not creating a point out of thin air. And I, I think that's, that's not such a bad thing. Right, and I don't know if, if people fully understand what we're talking about, but... Um, when you get later in the season and teams are going to overtime more often because t games are getting tighter, if you're three teams in the standings, let's say Sharks, Ducks, Kings, Ducks and Kings are playing each other, Sharks need one of them to lose, they both go to overtime, they're both getting at least one point. One team's getting two, one team's getting one. That's three points now in the standing of them moving up right. um, as opposed to just two points going to one team. So this would eliminate that, but that's again yeah. a whole other discussion. Maybe we talk <laughs> about that in the off season when we have nothing else to talk when about. When we get closer down over there, yeah, right. sure, why not? Yeah. But that game was probably Eric Carlson's worst game that we've seen so far. Now yeah. I'm not. That's not me harping on Eric Carlson. I'm just making an observation that that was probably his worst game that we've seen so far. I've seen him in that game making several passes that get intercepted, several mm -hmm. passes that were just missed uh, altogether. I think that was the game where we had the um, there was a pass behind the net to Dylan and it bounced. It was way too hot for Dylan to handle, yeah. and it popped out right in front and boom goal. And so part of that could be them not playing enough together. Yeah. Well, and, and I had brought this. Other. Yeah, I brought this up too, saying, okay, well, does does it make sense to take? I think it was it was a, a during one of the lives that we had. Uh, I think it was Zach had asked. You know, what do you think playing about Dylan. yeah uh, taking Dylan and playing him alongside? Carlson, mm -hmm. right? So you can get Vlasic and Burns, uh, Braun back together. And, I, you know, I thought well, I, the only problem with that is now you have to have Carlson learn somebody else again. And I feel like that was part of the the mischemistry in the Carolina game and maybe why it was one of uh, Carlson's worst games that we've seen so far is because he just started playing with, with Brendan Dillon yeah. as opposed to he had been building some chemistry with Vlasic. You can argue that it may or may not have been working out too well, but I think the numbers kind of spoke for themselves outside of the plus minus. Mm -hmm. um, so you're kind of ripping this guy away from his his steady partner that he's known through his 11 games or 10 games yeah, or whatever. Right. Not that right? well. No, and yeah. not that well, but this is what he's learning as right. this player. Now you're giving him another player to learn. So I kind of felt that that might not have been the best move. Again, not Pete DeBoer, but me trying to understand what's going on during the game and why Carlson may have been, had his worst game that time. Yeah, and and on the other side of that, I think DeBoer does this a lot where he mixes the lines a lot, even yeah. the defensive pairings, because you want to be prepared for an injury. Sure. Let's say you always have the same defensive pairings and you know that guy inside and out. One of them goes down. Now you got to mix all the lines or all the pairings up, and now nobody knows yeah. anything. Now you have a little bit of chemistry with people, at least. And maybe that's what he's trying to do, is give Carlson a little bit of taste of every single yeah. defensive guy just in case someone gets down and gets hurt. Yeah. That, could be, that could be the main reason he's doing it. Not a bad call whatsoever. Um, so... Yeah, could be the case. Um, we'll have to wait and see how it shakes out for the the rest of the season. Obviously, you know we, we're still early. We're only game eleven as of tonight. Right, so. and, and going back to that shootout with Carolina, Pavelski hit the post. Yeah, Donskoy either got saved or he just it missed. was close. Yeah. I mean, imagine the Sharks win the shootout. Right now, what are we talking about? Eh, they played terrible, but they got two points. Right. And it's part of the win streak. And everyone's happy, right? Right. But <laughs> it's a shootout. Yeah. It's it's a skills competition. They didn't win it. Yeah. Um, that's what I don't like about it's a team sport that gets turned into an individual thing. So, yeah. I mean, it's like ending a baseball game after nine innings, after ten innings. Like if it goes to one extra inning, and then they go home run derby, yeah, to see who wins to get the extra point. And they don't have points in baseball, but 
It's a terrible analogy. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. But so anyway, who wants Marshall back? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my my point though is the shootout. Like it's a skills competition. It just and that determines an extra yeah. point in the standings. No, I hear you. I hear you. So uh, yeah. Well, the, like the one the one good thing at least to come out of the end of the Carolina game would be the post game celebration <laughs> yeah. from from the Carolina Hurricanes. Right. Hate me all you want, but for the next however many seconds I'm about to talk about this, uh, it's awesome. So basically, what they do is they stand. In, uh, well, it was Brock uh, McGinn, I think, is what it was. He, he stands there and he, he claps over his head, and everybody else is standing at the blue line. They're clapping over their head too, and it gets the crowd going too. The crowd's doing it with them, and then they start clapping faster, and then they sprint back and forth to blue line to blue line or something like yeah. that. And then as they get down towards the other end, they, they slide on their butts and they're doing this as if they're like rowing a boat or something. Well, I think that part changes. Because okay. I think the very beginning they just skated and jumped against the boards okay. and just slammed against the boards. I guess for me, it's just it's just the playfulness of it. Yeah. And the we, we've had Randy Hahn on the show and he talked about the, the interviews that that people did or the players give yeah. and how that's always so like just suit and tie corporate you know canned and there's never really any fun and it sucks because all the guys in this locker room are really fun interesting guys have right. great personalities and you never get to see it this is one of those times where you get to see the personalities of the players you know on, on, well, for the Her Carolina Hurricanes right. at least yeah. but you get to see the fun and the the I don't know. It's it's just something that's that's great to see. Almost like uh, in the NFL when they score a touchdown, now they can celebrate. Right? Team celebrations. Yeah, they can not have team celebrations. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think there's something to be said for that. So, I I, I don't know. For me, kudos to the the Hurricanes for the post game celebration uh, ceremony ritual, whatever you want to call it. I enjoy it, and I'm not even a fan. So, <laughs> is what it is. Yeah. It's Moving cool. right along, though, yeah. um, we had the Anaheim Ducks today. So I know you you wanted to kind of kick off the whole Ducks conversation. So. Uh, I'll just well, we got a overtime win, yeah. which is great. Uh, so that's another row column win yes. for the Sharks. Um, it, it's always good to beat a division with a row, uh, just <laughs> like we did with LA, I think, in the first, second game of the season. Um, the Ducks are, are hurting. They're, they're missing, I think, seven of their forwards, which yeah. is a lot out of your lineup. So um, it, they start off the season kind of hot, and now that's kind of catching up to them, I think. And uh, now they're like a 500 team. So um, I think what we're going to see is the Ducks kind of losing more places in the standings and, and market correction, if you will, hmm. of where they're going to be. Hmm. I know you have something you to sure? add to that. Because, I mean, I don't know. I was watching the NHL Network one time. <laughs> <laughs> and there's this guy on there. I can't remember his name. I think it was Mike Johnson. Um, <laughs> And he was saying something about how the Ducks were supposed to be first in the Pacific, and right because of John Gibson and every yeah. You know what? I, I'll I'll give the Ducks this. John Gibson is is a phenomenal goaltender, yes. and if not for him, um, they would not be anywhere other than the bottom uh, of of the division. To be honest with you, yeah. Gibson has kept them in the game, and and I give credit where credit is due. He is a phenomenal goaltender. I honestly did not think he was as good as he is. Um, However, as Aaron said, there will be more market corrections as far as I'm concerned. And Gibson has a tendency to get injured, if I recall. Yes. And he's not been injured yet. So we're just looking for even more of a slip. It's more of if than when. Okay. Or when than I if. I think it's more of a when than yeah, if. Yeah, more when than if. Yeah. Sorry, still on East Coast time. I'm a little <laughs> tired. Um, yeah, Gibson's going to go down at some point, and uh, <laughs> the Ducks are just going to tank even more. Uh, Ryan Miller's the backup, and he's a good backup. Yeah. He used to be an elite goalie, uh, but he's definitely towards the, the end of his career, and he can't really hold the team together as well as Gibson uh, when he's healthy. Yeah. So um, I just don't see the I don't see the Ducks making playoffs. And if they do, <laughs> they're going to get swept like they did last season by the Sharks. So maybe they sh we should root for them to make playoffs so that we could sweep them again? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that would be amazing, sweeping them two years in a row. Go eight no in the playoffs against yeah. the Ducks. Yeah, I'm for it. I don't That'd know. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, conversely, in uh, to the Carolina game, this was one of Eric Carlson's best games, I think. I mean, in terms of maybe not point production, I think he might have had a couple more assists in another game. But um, in terms of the way that he was controlling the puck, skating the puck, passing, connecting with other players, um, all that was was spot on today. I was very impressed mm -hmm. with the, the ability of Eric Carlson. Now, he's not had his goal yet. He was very close today in getting yeah. his goal. 
But uh, again, I'm not really on Eric Carlson goal watch. I'm just looking for him to be as comfortable as possible to look like he n knows where everyone else is gonna be out there, where everyone else knows what he's thinking out there. And that's starting to come into fruition. And you could see it, there's gonna be hiccups like the, the Carolina game, but you could see it in tonight's game. Mm -hmm. Everyone seemed to be much more on the same page again. And I'm just looking forward to when this team really gels. Right. It's and gonna he's, he's going to get his points. We're seeing Burns now. He's on a was it an eight-game point streak. Um, and even even Carlson's on a three-game point streak now. He, t he played terrible in Carolina. He's still got a point. So uh, Carlson's the kind of guy that is a, a great playmaker, which we talked about earlier. And he's going to make the team and the players around him better. So once he starts gelling and we're starting to see it... Um, he is going to make the team awesome. And and going back to him bouncing back from a terrible Carolina game right. to a great Anaheim game, um, that's what elite players do is they have an off night, and but they don't have off nights in a row. So what you're not going to see is someone like uh, Kevin LeBanc who is having a few off nights in a row. Mm -hmm. He's not been looking great. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we are talking about this in our live segment. Um, if he gets scratched, and I don't know if he can get sent down, we'd have to look that up. Uh, probably a producer net will pop up around here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but Le uh, LeBanc might get scratched a game or two just to kind of give him a little break, uh, take a look at things in the press box. And it's not a knock on him. He's a young guy. He's still a great player. Um, no, he won't be traded at the trade deadline, <laughs> which is one of the questions that we had in the live segment. Um, he just, he, he's, you just see young players go through these growth spurts, um, and he'll get it back together, and he'll get his game going again. But going back to Eric Carlson, uh, elite players are the ones that are going to say, wow, I had a terrible game. I know what I need to do uh, in the next game. Bounce back completely. Yeah. And we go, wow, this is Eric Carlson. Yeah. He's amazing. Yep. And I think, uh, and I'll jump back to LeBanc, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, one of the things you're referring to is during the third period at least in the Anaheim game, we noticed that uh, Melker Carlson was playing alongside of Pavelski and Kane and LeBanc was playing on the low utilization line. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I'll be calling it from now on. Um, and so it was a, you know, a bit of a demotion in mm -hmm. terms of the amount of minutes the guy's going to be playing out there. So, um, you know, sending a message, yes. And I think, you know, you might see him get a scratch here or there or whatever. We've got, you know, good young talent that can step in. We've also got the potential to see Joe Thornton coming back in sometime soon. Who knows? Um, but other players to spotlight, Aaron Dell, he stepped in, had a great game, mm -hmm. and um, almost took, was it Carolina, right? I mean, Carolina he he, he yeah. almost stole that game, really. Yeah, I mean, he made, in the last 10 seconds of overtime, he made about two or three saves right, yeah. right in a row. Um, so they could have lost that game in, in overtime. So Dell has great. We already knew that Dell's a great backup goalie. Um, that was another couple questions that we had is if Aaron Dell would, would take over. But again, we talked about this two weeks ago when I was here. There was no goalie controversy. Right. Um, Jones is the starter. Jones is not going to be an elite goalie for 82 games, for 60 games, however many starts. So um, it's good to have this problem. Um, I don't know if you want to call it a problem, but no. it's good to have a very capable backup that can come in and almost steal a game for you. I yeah. mean, he almost did. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Aaron Dell is playing amazing. And it's great. It's great Absolutely. To see. Yeah. And two other guys that are uh, playing pretty well, getting their first goals during this trip. Uh, Auntie Suomela, uh, congratulations to you on mm -hmm. goal number one. It was a beautiful goal, too, by the way. He uh, yeah. puck protected, cut right in front of the crease, and then uh, threw in an almost reminiscent of the Vlasic goal in 2016 against the Ducks that they showed during the Anaheim yeah. game on the broadcast, yeah. where he just kind of puck protects it with his uh, red hand and cuts right across, and then boom. Um, beautiful, beautiful goal. Mm -hmm. uh, so congratulations to you. Also to Rourke Chartier. I don't know if it's Chartier or Chartier. I think it's with a sh sound. But anyway, uh, if, if we get to Andrew Zanowski on the show, he'll correct us. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Rourke, I'm going to say Chartier, uh, picked up his first goal of the season. Um, Hurdle doing most of the work on it was beautiful. He's uh, behind the net, puck protecting, goes to do a wraparound, and he ends up in the, in the slot <laughs> yeah. doing a wraparound on his stomach. Um, Gibson makes the save, and then there's Rourke Chartier with his back to the goal. 
Uh, picks up the puck, spins around again, and throws it right in. Beautiful, beautiful job. A lot of hard work right in front of the net. So congratulations to you on your first NHL goal as well yeah, there, Rorschach. Congratulations, yeah. Absolutely. So who's the next player we wanted to, to put well, on Well, I think we were talking about the line of Couture, oh, Hurdle, yeah, and, okay. and Timo. Uh, they've been on fire yes. lately, uh, scoring a bunch of goals today. In today's mm -hmm. game, uh, Timo almost had a hat trick, right? And yeah. he called it back <laughs> because of yeah. a terrible... Which I thought they changed the rule. <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. I, I mean, I have all these. Man, I I thought you know did Jones change his pads? <laughs> and they, I'm just reading too much stuff on the internet these days. <laughs> so um, uh, they called the goal back because um, he lifted his foot up as he was skating across yeah. the blue line, which I thought they changed the rules if your foot was just over the line with you. The old rule was your skate had to be on the ice, and it was just too hard for linesmen to see that even in replays. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to have those uh, the new cameras that they have on the on blue, the blue line, line yeah. to see if your skate was over it or not. And so, I guess uh, I guess I was wrong. Yeah. So I think it's terrible. I think the NHL needs to change that. And I'm not just saying that because it was Sharks' goal. I think um, the NHL has a scoring problem. Um, part of the reason why they're reducing the pads of the goalies is to get a little bit more goals. So why would you take away goals for something that's that? I don't know. Arbitrary. I, I think as long as the leg or the foot or what, whatever, as long as it's behind the blue line, I don't care if it's up in the air 10 feet. Exactly. As long as it's back there. that That's really what I care Maybe about. Maybe not 10 feet because then you can't see the angle on the camera. In the air? Yeah. Well, as long as it's behind <laughs> the blue line, I don't care where it is. <laughs> okay, so um, that that would be my only change to that rule is, is who cares if your foot's on the ice or off the ice or whatever the case is. If your foot is behind that line, period, I think it would be, I'd be happy with that. Yep. Um, but that's not the rule. So uh, he got his foot off the ice there and uh, it was brought in offside. So his goal was disallowed, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately. But... He got it when it mattered. He he picked that up at the uh, in the overtime period there and uh, got us the two points, which mm -hmm. is great. So um, you know, no harm, no foul there. I'll right. take it. Yeah. But you're right. That that line has been on fire. I mean, it's it's been phenomenal watching the puck protection uh, machine that is Tomas Hurdle. Yeah. He's insane. I can't believe how much he's grown since his injury and and him coming back and being healthy. And we saw flashes of it last season, late last season, where he was behind the net. Nobody could get the puck off of him, and we're just seeing it now more often this season. And then you pair him up with a guy like Logan Couture, who can score, yes, but more importantly, he's a really good playmaker as well, and he's mm -hmm. very good at finding other guys and getting them the puck. And then you throw Timo Meyer on top of who's having a monster beginning of the season right now. I think he's got, what, like six goals or mm -hmm. seven goals, something like that? I forget yeah. what it was, um, counting the goals tonight. And he's the guy that gets in front of the net and does a lot of the dirty work. Although hurdles usually in front of the net anyway because they can't get the puck off of them. Right. So, but you're seeing Timo pick up a lot of the garbage goals, a lot of those ones where he just stands there and bangs. Mm. Right. I think we're seeing that line is going to be in a year or two the future top line of the Sharks. Not um, that they're not the top line now; they, they're they're up there. Mm -hmm. But um, I think this is this is definitely the future of the Sharks. Yeah. And I think. Uh, the way Meyer goes in front of the goal and gets those dirty goals is kind of like what Pavelski did earlier yes. in his career. Still does, mm -hmm. but um, that's like the Pavelski role. And then uh, Hurdle is becoming the player that the Sharks drafted, drafted him to be, him to be um, and thought he would be. If he didn't have those injuries, we would have seen this guy maybe two seasons ago, where he's at right now. Yeah. So he's still young. He's still 24, I believe, which is still pretty young for NHL player. He's been around for four years, four mm -hmm. seasons. Um, so I think um, this line is definitely the future. Um, we're gonna see them a lot more in the coming years and they are on fire right now, which is great. Yeah. So this is part of the reason why the Sharks are one of the best teams in the league because they have the top line with Pavelski and Kane and whoever else you want to throw on there, Thornton when he's mm -hmm. back. Then you have this line. Then you have Sumella and Donskoy and the bank. I don't know who they keep Sorensen right now. Sorensen, yeah. like, and those guys are getting the mismatches because that's the third scoring line of yeah. the Sharks that most teams only have one or two. So this year is looking very bright, and um, I think in the years to come it's going to be looking great. So, yeah. So you you had one more that you want to talk about? 
Yeah, I think uh, I, I, I've done it a couple times on the show now, I think, <laughs> where I've, I've given apologies. And um, there was the Eric Carlson apology. Uh, I refuse to apologize to Mike Johnson. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> there is the uh, Yoakam Ryan apology that you're about to hear. Now, uh, we had said, we had said that there was a hole next to Brent Burns in the off season when we were first starting out our show. And I had specifically said that I was concerned with Yoakam Ryan playing alongside Brent Burns, not because I think that they're a bad, well, not because I think there's a problem with Yoakam Ryan or there's a problem with Brent Burns. I think there's a problem with the two of them together. Um, that's what I thought. I apologize. Um, I've seen Yoakam Ryan make several very good plays that actually kind of bail Burns out in many occasions mm -hmm. where he's, Burns may have been out of position Ryan steps in and plays that role and is able to take the puck away from the, the danger area and move it up and out of, of the zone. And I think he's done that a couple times now where I've said, okay, he's he's learned how Brent Burns plays. He's been comfortable now with where Burns is going to go. It's taken him time to adjust, but I feel like he's probably adjusted at this point. So I cast judgment a little too early. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> um, I still think it'd be awesome to have the Jordy Ben uh, beard on the team, <laughs> regardless. Um, yeah, so I, I do owe you an apology. However, you did have a ugly, ugly defensive play today uh, against Anaheim <laughs> where you had your back to the play. Um, I forget who it was. It was a, uh, not Aberg. I think it was Aberg. I had brought the puck the in. The goalie? No. Who? <laughs> Goldberg? No, not Goldberg, the goalie. Oh, no. we're talking about the Ducks, right? Wrong Ducks. That's the movie. Sorry. Anyway, so uh, Aberg brought the puck in and... Ryan had his back to him, and he's going uh, outside, inside, and Ryan's looking over his shoulder back and forth, trying to get a beat on where he is, when really he should just be turned around and facing the play. And Hedekin said the same thing. He says he needs to turn around and face the play. Because essentially that's what crossed him up, and then uh, Ryan was basically nowhere to be found, and Aberg just throws it in the net, no problems. Um, so, bad play on that <laughs> part, but... In all, I would say, yes, you have uh, exceeded my expectations, at least, and I apologize for calling you a hole next to Brent Burns. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of a lot of people, us included, fans, um, you know, you don't think about these players, especially Yogan Ryan, he's a young guy. Yeah. He's going to get better. Yes. He's going to improve. He's going to improve his game. So we've seen that this year. He's improved in, in playing well mm -hmm. with Burns, especially, and they're getting chemistry together. So um, we're going to see that over the long run, right. they're going to get better. And to that point, um, the same thing to be said about Kevin LeBanc, mm -hmm. right? Yes. He's a young player. He's going to make mistakes. He's probably going to get scratched now and then as a reminder that there are other people that on that are on this team that can step in and play this game as well. But in the long term, he's going to be a great player. He just needs that time to mm -hmm. really get in, find his groove, find out what kind of player he is, find out the types of players that he's going to be playing with and what's expected of him. We've seen guys like Logan Couture where he was the playmaker and when he comes on to the Sharks team, it's he's expected to be the goal scorer and now he's kind of back to being the playmaker. Your role kind of shifts and maybe LeBanc is still figuring out what his role really is. Yeah. We haven't really seen LeBanc score a lot of goals yet and that's kind of what yeah. he's known for. So he is a good playmaker as yeah. well and he's been doing that. But... Um, the goal scoring, I think, is still going to be coming uh, in a big way for LeBanc in yeah. the future. Maybe not this year, maybe in the next season or two, but uh, that's his kind of wheelhouse, if you will, yeah. what he's going to be bringing to the team. Can't wait to see more from the young guys and their growth, and also can't wait for a milestone for this show. Yes, sir. And we, that milestone is? 1,000 subscriptions. We are so close. We are we ridiculously are, close. Yeah, well, as of recording today, I think we're within 35, 30, 33, two. 32, <laughs> uh, even more. So um, we would like to get to that. So if you haven't already, obviously, please subscribe. Hit the <laughs> subscribe button, which I think is down over this way. Um, and we are going to be doing a giveaway yes. for when we hit 1,000 subs. So if it's this week, we'll do it next episode if it's you know a year from now we'll do it then <laughs> but uh thanks to our producer slash director slash everything except master of key grips yes master of key grips yeah. uh jason <laughs> he uh donated a google home nice to give away so we'll be giving this away um to a lucky fan who is a subscriber mm -hmm. and um then you can listen to us in podcast form at your home which is great. Why wouldn't you want to? <laughs> <laughs>
So uh, yeah, uh, uh, Google Home, uh, we're gonna do a giveaway on, on that. Once we hit a thousand subscribers, it won't be um, the, so the thousandth subscriber, but once we do hit a thousand, we'll drum up another one of our uh, Raffles, or raffle something. giveaway contest, whatever yeah. it was that we did last time, I think with the signups and everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'd like us to, yes, we will sign the box for you. Oh, that's a good idea. So, we'll sign it. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Only if they want. They may say, please don't sign it. They may want to give it away as a gift. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Do what you want to do with it. It's yours. So, I think that brings us to the end of episode number 20. Mm -hmm. Yes? 20. Wow. I know. It's really crept up on us. I yeah, can't believe. It's, it's really insane. grown up. Wow. Well, Goes fast. Only 32 more episodes until we do this all over again. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Very good. Well, hey, thanks again for tuning in. Please do make sure to put something down in the comments. Talk with us. We love talking with you guys. Um, it's really been uh, fun having the back and forth interactions, especially during the live. We mm -hmm. love doing the live shows with you guys and chatting with you guys. If you're not sure when we do that, please subscribe to us so that you get to see that. Uh, the notifications. Yeah. And, um, Typically, it's uh, we do it the night of recording episodes, right. and lately it's been Sunday nights, so usually Sunday nights around 9.30 yeah. Pacific time. Uh, we go on for about a half an hour, and we'll take your questions, and uh, we love to hear from you. We are very active on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, Reddit Discord. Discord. Yeah. Uh, so we're all over the place, so uh, feel free to get a hold of us. Yeah. We'll love to talk to you about sharks. Very good. Okay, well, I think that wraps us up. So thank you for tuning in. And uh, if, whether you're listening on a podcast or if you're watching us on YouTube, we do appreciate your viewership. So thank you very much. Thanks. And we will see you next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.